Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us at 2010 by Cooks. It's a great pleasure to be here, and I know you guys are going to be having a lot of fun because I learn everything every time. I learn something every time somebody comes on that stage, and it's not going to be any difference with the next friend coming up, Vivian Peterson from Divine Restaurant. Hello, Vivian. Hello. How are you doing? Great. How is Divine doing? Good. We're going to be relocating soon. You are? Where are you yes. going? It's a secret. Oh, don't you love that? Catch you us on Facebook, Divine Seattle. Just like that. That's it. So do you have a restaurant that's still open or is it still in, in motion it's right now? It's open until the end of July. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's still located where? On 80th and Roosevelt. And it's going to be moving where? It's a secret. <laughs> Damn, she didn't go for it. All right, never mind. It's a secret. So you have a, what kind of cooking do you do? What kind of cuisine do, do you do? We do Greek food. Greek food. Mm -hmm. It's all Greek to me. That's what they say, right? That's or to right. you. So... How long have you been cooking? All my life. See? Our restaurant's been open for four years, but this has been a passionate dream of mine. So. And you've got somebody with you there. What, who, who's that? This is my daughter, Penelope. She's at the restaurant a lot. And Hi, Penelope. And I wish you guys could see your dress. She's got this gorgeous dress on. <laughs> wow, you came dressed up for the show. What do you do, Penelope? Do you cook with mom? Mm -hmm. Do you? Really? What do you like to do? What's your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing to cook is probably noodles. Noodles? <coughs> Every kid likes to cook noodles, right? Wow, that's so cool. I love noodles. You love noodles. Well, that's good. So what are we making today? Are we making noodles? We are. We're making pasticcio, which is a Greek lasagna. And you pasticcio, need, okay. And you need help with this. Okay. So I highly recommend you get your family involved and your daughters or sons to help you with this and you can keep them busy because these noodles are fantastic. Um, so the whole recipe is about making a lasagna with blanched noodle like a regular lasagna or is it different lasagna? It's a little bit different because we make a bechamel Okay. To go, that goes on top and you also need to use noodles that are hollow on the inside. That's what ah. makes these. Oh, those are straws. Yeah, They're, they are kind of like straws. That's why kids like them. I like that, that's cool. Wow. So, the processing, so what else is in there? You get, you've got noodles, you've got bechamel, you've got meat. What is that, ground, ground beef? Ground beef. Okay. But there's some secret hidden ingredients in making this that and I'm going to so show And it's so secret tonight. that we hide it and we don't know where it is. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you throughout the show. Okay. So, uh, first things first, let's put a little bit of sea salt in the water. Okay. And then you want to put a bag of noodles in there. All right. Just like that, you put them in the water and that's the end of that? That's the end of that until they cook up. Till they cook and they're going to melt down into the water. You cover it up? Yep. I just cover it up. Sure, good. sure. And then we're going to get started on the meat sauce. Um, so we want to do a little bit of butter. So do, in, in Greek cooking, you use a lot of butter too, just like French cooking? Or yes, no? we do. Oh, yeah? Well, olive oil too? Olive that's oil. Use your hand. This is a kitchen. <laughs> Good, I love using my hands. That's pretty hot, yeah. You want to do uh, one onion. And you want to try to brown it a little bit? Mm-hmm. A little bit of garlic. About two cloves. Two cloves, that's a, you call it a little bit of garlic? <laughs> Maybe more. I, I, like I usually like to use a little bit more spice and everything. It smells good, doesn't it, Penelope? Yeah. I know, it smells good already. You want to do two pounds of uh, ground beef. Two pounds of ground beef, just like that, put right into the pan. It's going to get harder on my arm. Okay, so do you want to move that around with those little... Yeah, they're... they're you were looking for your yeah, rowing kit here. And the noodles, I just keep pushing down, mm -hmm. but it's not going down, but I guess I just have to wait till it cooks. So this is not a non-fat dish. This is not a non-fat dish? No. It's just... Why would you want to have a non-fat dish? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. Just letting you know. <laughs> okay. If you want a non-fat dish, you don't need that. No, not at all. You eat white, blanched rice. But it's rice. so good. <laughs> Non-fat dish. 
So we're going to do a little bit of uh, black pepper in here. Black pepper. I like the way she says a little bit of everything. Oregano. Greek a little oregano. bit of oregano. Fresh parsley. The secret ingredient is cinnamon. Cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I knew a girl named Cinnamon once. Some fresh nutmeg. Nutmeg. So cinnamon and nutmeg. Ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg. It, absolutely. I love nutmeg. Beautiful spice. Just don't put too much, right? You get a ghost. Just a little bit, and then because you're also going to want to add it to the uh, bechamel. Ah. And then you just get your meat browning. That's beautiful. Smells, smells delicious. Good, huh? Smells delicious. Cinnamon. Yeah, you can smell that cinnamon and that nutmeg already in the oregano. Oh. So you use dry oregano. Could you use fresh oregano too? If you have, if you have fresh uh, oregano, or does it? Not in this one. No. I like the dried, fresh okay. dried, uh, well, fresh dried. <laughs> We've already established earlier in the day, then, uh, and I know none of you were here, but that uh, dry oregano in certain recipe was very quite essential, as opposed to fresh oregano. So. In, in certain recipes. I like to use fresh oregano in my uh, lemon potatoes. Ah. When I'm making those. So you're trying to cook it all the way here? Is that what you're doing? You're cooking it all the way? Yeah, we're gonna cook this all the way. Uh-huh. But it's almost halfway cooked, so now it's ready for the wine. Wine. And you wanna add some white wine to it. Um, what right kind of here, white wine? I have two Greek white wines. You can use any kind of white wine you like. I like to play around with Retina because it is a resin wine. It's very unique. Uh, a lot of tourists drink it in Greece. I personally don't drink it myself because it's got an earthy flavor, a little resin flavor, but I love to cook with it. So what I gathered from that is we give it to the tourists because we don't think it's that good. <laughs> Didn't you get that? I got that. I think I got that. She's Greek. Well, we don't drink this stuff. We give it to the... When the Americans show up, we just get rid of that stuff. I got that. I think I got that. I'm just um, kidding. Go ahead. All so right, what here is we it? Go. Is it resinous like rosemary or something like that? What does it taste like? Well, let's have you taste it. I have no problem. Here. They said, "Don't drink on TV." I said, "Why?" Whoa! It smells really. Wow! It smells like a yeah. It does smell like almost like a resinous, like rosemary or. It's it's just pure resin. Yeah. <laughs> but Delicious. you can see how it would be good in food, though. I can see how it's really good to cook with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the winemaker is going to be really happy about my statement here. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually delicious, but it's very different. You're not testing a Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay or Viognier or no. This is a, another Greek Sauvignon Blanc. What, really? Let's try taste that. this one. Because Greeks can actually make good wine. <laughs> I mean, I think I really got that the resina is not that good. Now, uh, this tastes totally different. This test actually smells like a Sauvignon Blanc. It is a Sauvignon Blanc. Delicious. It is. That's what we're going to be drinking, I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is definitely a great cooking wine. <laughs> wow, I'm glad we got that out of the way. I'm thinking I'm going to have the... Uh, <clears throat> somebody's going to give me uh, a lot of... Uh, not good time for this, for being dissing this resin or stuff. <laughs> I'm not dissing it, I just think it has a purpose. A lot? As a matter of fact, <clears throat> the, wine, the wine director of um, Sister is coming next with us, Eric Lidlman. I'm going to quiz him on that. Just so I'm using a coarse sea salt. You uh -huh. don't want to use too much of this because it will make it really Because it releases later. Exactly. The difference between fine ground salt and rock salt like this is one is already grounded, so when you use it, it's, it's stronger, so you don't use as much. This, you have to be very careful because it really sizzles. It's a rock, so it starts melting in your food, and what you test now is not what's going to taste like in 15 minutes from now. Make sense? Always remember that, because if you use the same amount, you're going to be having a little surprise. We're going to do a little bit of tomato paste. Tomato paste. Mmm. You want a smaller spoon? Okay. okay. So are you going to make... You, you said you were making a bechamel. Are you making the bechamel in here no, or on a se separate pan? Separate, separate. Okay, just want to make sure. So in reality, you can do this very quickly for your family. Some uh, diced tomatoes or crushed tomatoes. 
Do you buy so canned tomato or fresh tomato? Uh, these are canned. And what kind of canned brand do you, do you have a specific brand you use or? Uh, just whatever looks really good. You're not like the Italian, they always go, San Marzano, <laughs> Marzano, Marzano. No, this is, um, I'm trying to make this down to earth for a lot of families at home and people that have to get a meal cooked for dinner. Yeah, in their they, family don't, they don't go Marzano. No. They go tomato. <laughs> yeah. It's whatever they have at home and they need to get it something. It says tomato, that's good enough. Going, exactly. Could you like actually use ketchup and water? Not I, really. No, I wouldn't do that. But you that could probably, be very you, know, you know what though, you can use V8. I've used V8 in cooking and that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, something is cooking, yeah. Oh yeah, nice. Right in front of me. All right, so let's uh, start on the bechamel sauce. Thank this God it wasn't oil, part. we'd be on fire right now. Um, okay, so um, the pastas are boiling. What do okay. you need? Uh, the pot to make bechamel. This. This one. There you go. Ta -da! And as you know, in French cooking, you do a lot of bechamel. Yeah, so in classic is, cooking, absolutely. This is where I'm going to have Penelope uh, crack me a couple eggs in here. This is when your helpful. children become handy. You definitely need help on this one. They always want to know what's for dinner, but they never want to make it. Two eggs. So that's when you bring them in and go, hey. Right, guys? <laughs> You're in front. Target number one over here. Okay, My kids, they always go, what's for dinner? I go, I don't know. I haven't seen the menu yet. So you want to separate two eggs. Um, you know, we had, a tool, we had a tool earlier that was pretty cool. The what? We had a tool earlier, then you break the egg, and <laughs> it was just pretty, pretty. I just thought that was, you could use that one. So two egg yolks. Yeah, so you're going to have to use these egg yolks to put in your meat sauce. You mean those egg whites? I sure? mean the egg whites. Okay. And then the egg yolks and the eggs that Penelope cracked, we're going to put in the bechamel. So I'm awesome. going to have her stir these up. Eat it. Mm -hmm. Now bechamel takes a lot of butter. I like Greek cooking more and more. <laughs> it sounds a lot like French cooking. It's we start with a pound of butter. Very similar. And then we go <laughs> a little bacon, perhaps. Julia, my love. Oh yeah. Okay, so this part's really tricky. Here we go. So you have eggs and egg yolks. They're mixed. They're broken down. Then you have flour. Flour. So you put the flour. This is, this is the tricky part. I'm going to have you slowly pour the milk in. Okay. Okay. Can't believe she trusts me to do something. <laughs> so you're making a roux. Yes. And you have to keep stirring this. Yeah. So that it does not get any, you know, bumps and lumps on it. Yeah, you don't want a big lumps in your roux, otherwise okay. you're going to be eating them later. Yeah, you want this to be very smooth, so we'll start adding the milk slowly right now. Right now? Mm-hmm. How slowly? That's perfect. Okay. Just keep going. You want to make sure that You know, this, this is, is only a half hour show. I know, I know. I'm going slowly here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay, you can go a little faster. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> How slow would you like it to be? Well, uh, it's going to be slow. Yeah, this goes good. Is that good? Oh, yeah. So you're pouring slowly because you want to make sure you mix all that flour and butter with the milk. You don't want to get those lumps in there because those lumps are going to be in your sauce later and that's not going to be so tasty. No, and then people just will chew into a bunch of flour. Mmm. Mm. No good. So this is the tricky part and this is where you need help. You can have your kids pour the milk in while you're stirring. Oh, Penelope, I'm sorry. I took your job. <laughs> Normally you're pouring the milk. Okay. Um, but, you know, I got to tell you, you need some muscles for this. All right. How about if we change a little bit? <laughs> Sounds good. How about if we do this the other Woo! way? Tired. All right, yeah, you is... can do it. Why don't you pour the milk in for Terry? All right, Penelope. I'll check on the noodles. Just put the milk in there. Go ahead. No, really. Very beautiful. You can go faster than with your mama. There you go. I'll follow. There we go. Keep going. Keep going. Beautiful. The whole thing? The mm -hmm. whole thing? Okay, the whole thing. Go. <laughs> All right, Penelope. Pour it in. Isn't it funny when the stove is higher than the kid? I love it. Oh. Beautiful. Thank you so much. A big round of applause for Penelope. <laughs> Thank you. Very cute. Thank you, miss.
<laughs> These noodles look pretty good to you. <laughs> yes, I love when the noodles look good. <laughs> yes. I think they're pretty perfect. Pretty good to go. Yeah. Because you're going to bake it. Delicious. Yeah. You want to try? I know she wants to try. <laughs> you think it tastes like grandma or no? <laughs> no. That's what happens when you skip a generation like that. That looks beautiful. Do you want to put it in here? Oh, yeah. And, oops, like that. Get that stirred out, and then you've got to empty out the water here. Here. Thank I'll you. take the water out of here. Do you need this pot? No, we can use another pot. Oh, we can use another. Do you want to get me another? Oh, I got it. I got it. Here. How big of a pot do you need? Is that big enough? No. No. We need okay. a bigger one. Well, we'll try to get rid of that water. Here you go. And I put the rest over here. There we go. Perfect. So you want to steal the bechamel pretty well, right? Because you want to make sure it doesn't burn. Yeah, you want to keep stirring it. In the meantime, we can add a little bit of salt to it and the fresh nutmeg. Don't use your finger. Use mine. <laughs> it tastes better for me. Nutmeg. Perfect. Beautiful. That's what you said earlier. We were going to use some nutmeg in here, too. Do we need to mix that little uh, sauce back there? Should I mix that oh, a little bit? Sure. Definitely home cooking here. I love it. Save a little bit of butter to butter your pan. I'm going to use my fingers. So you, you need to butter your pan before you put the noodles in there? Uh-huh. So far, you've used two ten half pounds of butter. That's pretty good. You're holding with the French. That's good. <laughs> I That's wish awesome. you guys can try this. It's so good. That's my favorite part, like buttering the whole dish. Mm. I know. It's fun, isn't it? So what goes in here? Um, the noodles are going to go in here. The noodles are going back in butter. Oh, Oopsie. That looks Ooh. dangerous. Opa. That's there why we, we chefs don't look so good. We just dress up with big, heavy equipment. <laughs> To doing this at home, be careful. Okay, so now this is where feta comes in. We're gonna do a little bit of feta in the noodles. Feta. Mmm. Mm. That, that, that's Greek cheese, right? Yes. How do you make that? Have you ever made feta? I haven't feta? made feta, no. no? Uh -uh. But I know a lot of my ancestors have in the village. <laughs> Yeah, I think everybody, <laughs> a lot of your ancestors, yes. Me too, I think a lot of your ancestors have made that. <laughs> so I'm tossing it around and think that's what Perfect. you want me to do. Perfect, so we can get it off the heat now. Get it's it off the to heat, go. It's enough the heat. Focus on your bechamel. 